is not just any boat. This is Duracell, and it has a storied past that I'm going to tell you a little bit about during this episode. I'm Janneke, and I'm Matt's wife. While I'm not a boat builder like Matt, Duracell and this dream project has captured my heart and imagination, and I'm excited to be a part of it. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. So Duracell's story starts back in 1987 in Newport, Rhode Island. Duracell was built by legendary American offshore sailor Mike Plant. Uh, he's actually a pretty interesting guy. There's a whole documentary about him called Coyote, the American or the Mike Plant story. Um, which I highly recommend, and there's lots of footage of the young Duracell in that uh, documentary. So Mike Plant built Duracell mostly with his own hands in order to compete in the first ever Vendée Globe in 1989, which is a solo, non-stop um, circumnavigation sailing race. And this photo shows Duracell with a Duracell spinnaker and the reason it was named Duracell and it had a the spinnaker is um, Mike Plant actually got Duracell the battery company to sponsor him for the race and uh, contribute towards at least part of the construction of the boat. Mike Plant's nephew who made the documentary Coyote the Mike Plant story um, shared this footage with us of Mike Plant sailing Duracell in the Vendée Globe. Pretty amazing to have that footage. So Mike Plant um, was racing in the globe and somewhere near New Zealand a small part on his rigging actually broke and he had to seek refuge and so he went to an island called Campbell Island in New Zealand and he was anchored out in a bay and when a really big storm started and caused Duracell's anchor to start dragging and dragging the boat towards the rocky shore. Um, so a group of locals saw what was happening. They jumped in their dinghy, they motored out to Duracell, and they helped Mike Plant to safety. Because Mike Plant received outside help, he was actually disqualified from the Vendée Globe. Um, and although the locals who helped him swore they wouldn't tell anyone that they'd helped, uh, Mike Plant did the right thing and he called the race committee and told them that he had received outside help and this disqualified him from the race. So even though he was disqualified, he continued the solo circumnavigation. He arrived in France um, in seventh place, which beat the American record for solo circumnavigation at the time in 1989. So Mike Plant apparently was, at the time, was he was received by the French um, as a sort of hero for his honesty and for his really fast time. Mike Plant then moved on to his next boat, uh, Coyote, and he sold Duracell to a man from Seattle named John O. John went out to Rhode Island and sailed it to through the Panama Canal um, back to Seattle. And this photo shows John on a stop in San Francisco Bay on Duracell recently after he had purchased it. Pretty soon after selling Duracell to John, Plant entered his new boat, Coyote, in another Vendée Globe. And it was during his delivery from Rhode Island to France to begin the Vendée Globe that Plant was lost at sea. Now the news, the Coast Guard has called off its search for the American yachtsman Mike Plant. His boat, Coyote, was found 32 days later, capsized, and missing the lead bulb that should have been attached to the keel. At the time of his death, he was one of only five sailors who had done three solo circumnavigations of the planet. And in 2002, Plant was inducted into the Single-Handed Sailing Hall of Fame. 
So then John entered the Pan Pacific race on Duracell. Um, he'd renamed it Northwest Spirit by this time. And John won the Pan Pacific, coming in first place in Osaka, Japan. This photo's from uh, some Japanese press from the race. After winning the Pan Pacific race, John decided to do his own non-racing solo circumnavigation of the planet. These photos were taken of John at the beginning of his journey um, on his way to Cape Horn at the tip of South America. These photos are from right outside San Francisco as he was passing by off the coast. It was only a few days after these photos were taken, um, somewhere north of the equator, that uh, John had a collision with a cargo ship. Duracell T-boned a cargo ship, and because the autopilot on Duracell was on, it kind of flipped to the side of the cargo ship, and then something on Duracell's rigging got caught on the side of the cargo ship, demasting Duracell. So John was given the choice of sinking his vessel and getting on the cargo ship um, or continuing on his own. So he decided to, the boat was still, there was no major structural damage besides being demasted. So he couldn't sail, but he did motor um, back to Turtle Bay, which is a small anchorage off the west coast of Baja, California. In Turtle Bay, he refueled and then motored up to San Diego. And in San Diego, he loaded Duracell onto a truck and trucked uh, the boat all the way up to sea outside of Seattle and put Duracell uh, in his front yard um, on pavement. And that's where Duracell spent the next 25 years. In the early fall of 2019, Matt and I had just returned from a two-year Pacific cruise on our 39-foot sloop Louise. During this cruise, Matt did a lot of talking and thinking and researching and dreaming about building our next cruising boat. And he decided that rather than build this boat from scratch, he wanted to find an old boat or an old hull that had really excellent bones and that he could make our own. We could not have dreamed that we would find that boat, that we would find Duracell within literally just days of returning from our Pacific cruise. So Matt was surfing a local sailing forum. He saw John's post offering up Duracell and he sent me a text that same day that said, I found our next boat. Two years after responding to his post and getting to know John and Duracell, John generously gave Duracell to Matt. When this project is complete and Duracell is once again in the ocean, John will be the first to sail it. So with a storied past and a 25-year pause, now Duracell's story continues with us.